Hey guys, so I thought I'd bring you along for a diagnostic and hopefully repair of this USA made, probably from the oh, 90s, I would guess, I'd hazard a guess, ish, it's total guess, USA made um, hedge cutter. So I know nothing about, the, in fact, it's a bit of a lie actually, when I picked it up, I did test it that it would turn over and I did notice that actually it's got no compression. And that made me almost there and then turn away from it and think, no, don't waste your time, don't waste your money. However, it can be saved sometimes, even if the engine is scored or the piston is scored, you can actually still save them. So I thought, you know what, in a way, I kind of hope it is scored and that way we can work through it together. And maybe if you've got a piece of equipment that is scored, you can try this and there's a fairly good chance that you can actually save it. So uh, we will see, we're gonna get into it together and uh, yeah, without further ado, let's start tearing it apart. If there's an air filter in here, it's probably um, gonna be deteriorated. There it is. Let's have a look. Oh no. No, it's actually all right. Okay, let's take you off. No, doesn't actually smell horrendous. Fuel. Not sure what we are on. That's on. I'm doubtful. <laughs> oh, I hit it off. Ah! Ah! <laughs> it actually starts. All right. Uh, in fact, it's worth mentioning, don't, um, just because it will start and run for a few seconds, don't think or don't get lulled into the full sense of security thinking, piston must be fine, it's not gonna be scored, not gonna be damaged. That's not the case. When they're cold, when the engine's cold, everything's slightly smaller. And if it is scored, and there is transfer from the piston to the cylinder, as it warms up, oftentimes you'll start to find after a few minutes, it will start to act funny. It will start to bog and, and it won't rev up properly, it will die, it'll be hard to restart, so. Just something to bear in mind. Right, so we know that's good. I'm gonna check the cylinder next. I'm gonna check it through the exhaust port. So we have to take a few bits and bobs apart. I might speed this up because uh, I don't think you're gonna benefit from me seeing, from seeing me unzip a few screws. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. It's, uh, it's running a bit rich, it is. Right, so this has a couple of springs holding it on. Let's try a motocross spring puller first. This is all it is. It's uh, basically just a hook and it's used to pull the, the springs off. I used to do motocross. Oh, there we go. Read about that. How about that? Ah, oh, let's bring you in and show you what we got. There's some scuffing. Yeah, there's a little scuffing in there, but. No, that's absolutely fine. It looked a lot worse than I thought. Oftentimes, you'll get carbon in here, and there isn't. It's just a bit of oil that I put in earlier. Well, oil, the mix I put in earlier. That really, really surprises me. Oh, that's taken us into the crankcase. There should be a seal under here, which I don't really want. Yeah, there is. I don't really want to upset that. In fact, that that's a bit strange as well. The, the cover holds the cap onto the crankcase. So anytime you take the cover off, not that you'd really need to, maybe apart from cleaning, um, you kind of, you're disrupting the amount of pressure that's going onto that uh, gasket, or in this case, I think it's a silicon, it is, it's a silicon. Take that off. The carby comes off. I wonder if it's a, an, oh, it is, it's a Zammer. Check that out, it's a Zammer. And then you need some block off plates. I just use pieces of rubber. Let's see in 
take down. Now the exhaust side, as I say, is a slightly different setup. And it is going to be a bit tricky. It'd be almost nice if I had a bung that I could put in there, but I don't think I've got any cork. Uh, unconventional, but it might work. It doesn't hurt to try, does it? You've got nothing to lose. Put the spark plug adapter in. So my guess is it's going to leak on uh, vacuum, but not on pressure. And that's going to be the seals. The thing is, so when you put pressure into a two-stroke, what it actually does is it forces the sealing lip of the crankshaft seal onto the crankshaft itself. And oftentimes it can actually hold. It's not until you draw vacuum which is what happens as the piston travels up in the cylinder. It's not until you draw vacuum that it actually pulls the sealing lip off of the crankshaft, and that's where the leak occurs. So not always, you can leak on pressure at the crank seals, but it's not as common. So we're looking for around about seven to 10 PSI. Oh no, oh, you are an idiot, Tom. <laughs> you remember what I said earlier? Oh, how strange. There is <laughs> Those screws hold the cover to the crankcase on. Oh, shoot. Oh, dear. Oh, well, look, you get what you get with me here. At least it's uh, just a gasket. You can actually have a look on the, in the bottom end. You want to have a quick look in the bottom end? <laughs> I saw it hold, then it dropped slightly, and all of a sudden it disappeared. I was like, no, it must come off. <laughs> all right. Hey, look, this, you guys are so proud of it. Made in the USA. Look at, check that out. I'm such an idiot. I can't believe I did it. I'm probably going to be too long. Go bottom out. Yeah. pass. Now let's try the oil seals. About 15 inches of mercury. Turn the engine over, make sure it returns. Damn, it does too. Well, the little contraption, be it a bit janky, <laughs> did the job. Well, that worked better than expected, didn't it? You can't be unhappy with that. Sometimes you just <laughs> sometimes you just have to improvise. Okay, compression test next. Oh, I'm going to say 150, even though I find it hard to believe myself. Um, I'm, I'm going to say 150, maybe 140. I mean, it, it looks good. Inside the, uh, inside the cylinder, the piston looks good, the rings look good. It is slightly worn, there's no more machine marks there, so uh, I'd say 140 to 150, even though it feels like it's less than, two, uh, less than 120 PSI. You're watching. We are 140. 140, <laughs> I would say I'm good, but uh, the problem is uh, I actually said it was going to be less than 120 when I first felt the pull cord. So uh, it's just dropped 10 PSI because I've pulled it out, but it was 140. So I guess that just goes to show, and I've said it before, the pull rope is not an accurate way to test compression. We need to put the spark plug in so that we can create compression because it's much harder for the spark to jump a gap under compression. There we go. Okay. Let's start off with, I like to lay everything out in the order in which it comes off. Screws. 
I'm going to leave that gasket on, which is fine. It actually looks really clean in there. I do want to have a look at this diaphragm, which looks fine there. The little, ki the little tabs, little one-way valves are not bent up. And there is no mark from the little drilling. Sometimes you get a little a ring around there. That hasn't got it, so that looks absolutely fine so far. We're going to have a look under a hand lens with that. This looks like another one of those really fine screens that Zama. Um, yeah, where's the light? Yeah, that looks that looks completely blocked. But it's probably just stale fuel. But they are a very thick coarse screen, and uh, and Zama have gone away from that now, probably because it's causing issues. But uh, we're going to clean that out anyway. They've got limiters on here. These can normally just be pulled off. That's one, that, that's off. That's off as well. Half, one, half. It's about one and three quarters. And then this one is the high speed screw. So, half, one, half, yeah, basically one and a half. With those settings, ah, they're fine. They're absolutely fine. Let's take this uh, purge off. A little bit of vinyl size fuel. We'll have to clean all that up and double check it. Oh, this is the other side now, so let's start a new layer. Got a couple more screws there. Be careful, I don't want to damage the diaphragm. Uh, doesn't feel terrible actually, I've got to be honest. And it looks absolutely spotless. No, there's nothing, <laughs> nothing wrong with that at all. That's so good. It's fine. I just want to see if I can ease this needle up. I've got the gasket on here. The problem is, oh look, I wasn't sure. If, I kind of feel like someone's put a new carb kit in here, you know. Let's get the needle out and we can inspect the needle ourselves together. So the needle has got some wear on. So this style looks, it's the newer style. It's got a gray coating on it. And what happens over time is it wears, you start to expose a red coating. And uh, that's what's happened here. It's just started to expose it. Again, this sort of stuff really needs to be done under a hand lens. Let me see if I can show you what I'm looking at. There's the camera, yeah. Can you see there's like a little red ring there? That's just a bit of wear. It should be fine. I'm gonna to have to have a look myself. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. And the f what was the other thing? The fuel screen that I was looking at earlier, you're not gonna be able to see it, but uh, you need to have light behind it to be able to see through it clearly. This is a 10 times magnification, and it's absolutely fine for this sort of stuff that we're doing here. So you're not gonna have any issues whatsoever if you were to use it. The next thing we wanna look at is the metering lever, because the lever is actually a wear item. Where the diaphragm nipple here presses onto the lever, it can wear it away. So again, I'm going to use 10 times magnification. Sometimes it's super clear, you can't miss it, but uh, no, that looks absolutely fine. It looks like it hasn't even been used. I kind of feel like this is, that's not worn, that's not worn. The gasket came off really easily. There's no wear on the metering lever. There's a little bit on the needle, but that can just happen fairly quickly anyway. It's only very light coating. I'm hazarding a, hazarding? Hazard a guess to say that this is actually uh, possibly a new carb kit. It's always worth mentioning that the low speed screw is longer. I've yet to find one that's shorter. The low speed screw is longer than the high speed screw. So I'm gonna go give it a clean and then we'll, uh, we'll reassemble. I put it all back together and I just tested out the purge bulb and it wasn't sucking fuel efficiently. Only time it would is if the fuel kind of had a bit of pressure, if I held the tube up and it had some fuel in it. And uh, so it was quite obvious something wasn't quite right. Took it apart, had a look, and then I decided to take the metering needle out and all of that. Here's the needle. And pressurize the carb and see where it was leaking well, or where it was sucking air. Now have a quick look at this. So, so this is one of the reasons why I always recommend Anyone that's working on um, power equipment, two-stroke and four-stroke really, even though it's really more for two-stroke, you can use it for a lot of four-stroke diagnostics. 
is a mighty back pressure and vacuum tester. Really, really important. So if I pump this up now, it's actually blowing me a blast of air out of here. If I now put some soapy water on there, you'll be able to see exactly what's happening. Mm, like that. It just it pumped out and disappeared. That's fine. It's that. I have found this one, which is used, and it hasn't got that hole. But I could pop a little hole in there. I don't think that would be too hard. It'll just, not ideal, but I'd just use a drill bit. Let me try that. Mm, certainly better. Oh, that's better. Much better. We're filling that bulb up now. So that could very well, on its own, be the reason why this machine was junked, because it would have given um, serious lean symptoms. Maybe that's why they tried to put the carb kit in and they didn't replace that diaphragm. Sorry, the gasket. And uh, so they just, yeah, maybe they gave up on it. I, I, I'm really not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, let me tidy this mess up and uh, we will work on the fuel tank next and go from there. All right, guys, it's the next day and uh, carbs all clean. That's all put to one side. What I want to do next is separate this handle so I can install the new fuel lines, which actually run up the handle and then round here. I think they kind of come up like that, actually. And there are our two fuel lines. There. I really need to blow this off. It's absolutely horrendous. I'm going to get that in the tank. Well, I can just see already that the uh, O-ring is, is needs to be replaced. That's fine. I can get that. Yeah. Oh, no, that's hose. There it is. So yeah, it's fine. I'm going to reuse that. Really nice and clean. It's not broken anywhere. I can breathe through it, so it's clear. I almost feel like it's 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 new. Maybe someone tried to replace it. They bought it and they thought, "I oh, stuff it. It's not going to uh, it's not going to work because there's no fuel line in there." And you just threw it in. I'm not sure. Could be completely wrong. Of course, this is all just a, a guess. Let me go wash this out. It's all cleaned out. Uh, however, I haven't got fine enough. Tygon to go through those holes and the Tygon that I have got is going to be a bit squished in there I reckon so I'm going to just what I'll do I'm going to drill those two holes out just uh, just ever so slightly bigger I've checked that this Tygon actually fits nice and snug in the carb as well as on the barb of the uh, fuel filter so I'll drill those two out well, I'm going to try it's going to be a bit of a tricky one actually Remove, there we go. Just remove any of those upper bears. Excuse fingers. Can't really do that one handed. Could even get a bit of sandpaper in there. I might just do that. Maybe some Scotch Bright. Uh, or might just leave it actually, because you might end up causing more problems putting an abrasive like that in there. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Right, next thing I want to do is to open that up. That one, I reckon. Can. There we 
Okay, that's left us just a small nipple in there. That's all we need. There we go. Uh, well, then, I think that'll be perfect. It's like it was meant to be. You want to avoid using rubber around fuel. Of course, it's not going to last. <laughs> Beautiful. That can go back in there. And that's no problem. Then the cover goes on the front. That's all been cleaned out as well. And what we'll do next is have a look at the, uh, the gears. They're going to need to be greased. So uh, we'll see what condition the gears are all in. It's these. Anyway, it's what it is. There we go. Mm, actually, not actually not that bad. It I, I don't believe it to be. You know, I'm almost semi tempted just to leave it. It's uh. Yeah, I think that's unnecessary to replace that. I think I'm going to leave well alone there. That's going to go straight back on. Right, all that's left now is to sharpen it. Now this style, this has never been sharp. Actually, it feels quite sharp. I'm actually going to leave that just for now. I can always come in with a Dremel later and zap over each one. I might have to disconnect it to actually get down under here, but uh, I think we're going to fill it up with fuel. I think we're going to go give it a run. Uh, yeah, I've, I've not got an issue with that at all. Okay, let's go out and uh, do the first start together. Put one and a quarter on each. We want choke on one and a quarter each on the jets which we can adjust low and high that's on throttle lock is on and give it a couple of pumps Have you guess? Yeah, yeah, look. Look at all that junk. 
That is why we never put grease in here. Let's find out what's going on. Oh, thankfully it's not broken. There's just a whole heap of rust. It looks like it just, yeah, look at all that. Now, thankfully guys, I can say that it's not broken. No, it's not. It's just, it's a mess. This is a mess. We're going to give it a good clean out, guys. Let me go and take this out and come back in a sec. All right, it's all cleaned up. Pretty good. And what I want to do now is we're going to put a bit of oil, very, very light, tiny bit of two-stroke oil. We're going to apply it with the tissue. And that's going to ensure that uh, it's the most minute amount. It stops it rusting, but it also helps reduce the, the dust gathering. And that will just go up and in, he says, with a bit of a help, like that. And there you have it. That's lovely, lovely jubbly. So I'll just give it a bit of lube. It's not a hedge, it's a little bush. Probably a bit thicker than what this is designed for, but we're going to cut it back for him. He was pleased. See how we go. It starts, it runs, it holds a tune. So uh, yeah, there we go. We're gonna leave it there guys. Until next time, I hope you have a great one and I'll catch you soon.